Well, April the 7th of uh, each year marks uh, the celebration of World Health Day. To tell us more about uh, the significance of this day, we are now joined uh, by Dr. Fiona Atuhebwe, who is the Regional New Vaccines Introduction Medical Officer at the WHO Regional Office for Africa. Very good afternoon to you, uh, Doctor, and thank you so very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Thank you, Flo. As a start, I mean, let's talk about uh, World Health Day and uh, its significance, particularly uh, at a time when we're dealing really with a global uh, pandemic. Uh, thank you very much again, Flo. So the World Health Organization is really committed to ensuring that everyone, everywhere, and of whatever age can realize the right to good health. And this, uh, the pandemic has really shown us that this is not true, the equality that we think is not actually true. So right today we celebrate the World Health Day to shed light uh, on important issues. Uh, some of these include the mental health, non-communicable diseases, maternal, neonatal, child health, adolescent health and all that, but all in the context of a pandemic, which is really something new that we've not dealt with before and how important healthcare workers are, uh, to name but a few. Yeah. I thought it was quite interesting as I was listening to the conversation between uh, Dr. Masiri Somweti, uh, who is, of course, as we know, the Regional of uh, Office Director for Africa of WHO, uh, speaking to Dr. Zwilim Kize, our, our Health Minister, about the fact that wealthy countries should be sharing uh, their doses with uh, poorer countries. Surely the over-reliability of uh, poorer countries on wealthier nations should be something that that comes to to an end as it does often come with consequences doesn't it it definitely does so my question it definitely does yeah so my question then is should the who be pushing for that shouldn't the who be rather pushing for other ways within which uh, african countries or poorer other poorer nations uh, should rather be uh, getting things like uh, vaccines for example uh, you're very right, Flo, and this year's focus really is to build on health a fairer and healthier world. Whether that is manageable or not right now, we do not know, but at least we have to start somewhere. We've chosen this uh, because the world is full of inequalities. One, and COVID-19 has made this even more apparent than before. And the pandemic has shown us that some people are, who are able to live healthier and longer lives, even better lives and access better healthcare services than others, entirely due to the conditions in which they are born, in which they live or work or age. All over the world, some groups struggle to meet ends, to make ends meet uh, with very limited daily income uh, and have very poor housing and all that. We've seen that no access to water, no access to healthy and safe environments. Even clean air is a, is a, a, a dream for many people. Yeah. And what WHO has done is really to reduce that suffering by trying to curb these inequities. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about what the focus uh, this year is. Uh, no doubt, you know, this uh, past year, we've obviously had to deal uh, with uh, COVID-19. But as we commemorate World Health Day, where really is uh, the focus in particular uh, this time around? So we... We'll Real as we contend, one of the biggest challenges right now we face is really the battle between the COVID-19 and uh, and from, from other from, and other having to deal with COVID-19 in the midst of other health uh, issues. Yeah. And from for right in the in the coming year, we expect new variants to keep emerging as we work to make better vaccines are more equitable and to save as many people as possible and as we learn to live with this challenge uh, the preventable prevent other preventive measures we'll need to have to continue to be integrated into routine socio-economic activities as much as possible and several countries are really struggling with this balance and have struggled with this in the past year but we believe that now things should get better yeah uh, dr fiona what are some of the main challenges that the who has sort of identified as as being uh, the biggest obstacles when it comes to the distribution um, of uh, vaccines. I mean, you know, uh, my first question uh, as we were talking was about, uh, you know, wealthier countries and, and them sort of having the vaccines and some of the poorer nations not, not really having vaccines. But what are some of those challenges in terms of distributing uh, vaccines and making sure that there is equitable distribution of uh, vaccines throughout uh, the world? Because surely no life is more important than the other. 
Oh, that's a very pertinent question. I must mention that uh, in the, in the, in, uh, that the COVAX facility really started very, very well. And, uh, and the last figures we have as of April 6th, we had 45 African countries receiving over 31.5 million doses uh, through the COVAX facility, bilateral deals, and also from donations. And 42 of these countries had started vaccination with up to 12.2 million doses. And just over 4 million people in Africa actually being fully vaccinated. Right now, our biggest challenge is the number, our biggest bottleneck is the delay in the COVAX deliveries due to India's temporary ban on exports for priority domestic use that the country decided to do. And this will remain, which will give us very limited doses uh, in the month of April, but uh, with a with a potential and a plan to open in May. But aside from this, we have other challenges where we've seen the initial doses that were planned to be given to priority groups, the health workers, the people with living with chronic illnesses, or and even the older populations, that we have seen the, a diversion of these vaccines, of these doses. And we are dealing with a, a balance of, of an issue of vaccine hesitancy among the priority groups like health workers and the elderly and all those, with vaccine eagerness among other non-priority groups. These are the younger people and healthier people who are arriving at vaccination points. The other issue we are seeing is the data gaps which are undermining our ability as WHO to make evidence-based decisions. Even countries, they cannot make good informed decisions because they have really, really major data gaps. But we are working together, WHO is working to support countries to improve the reporting of real-time data to ensure that we improve our decision-making. And then also, I know I can list over 100 challenges, yeah. but then finally I'll talk about the fact that countries run a risk of diverting resources away from routine immunization. We saw that during COVID, where countries changed, diverted their resources from normal other work to fighting the pandemic. So we have also started supporting countries to fundraise and, and get a, a dedicated basket of funds for COVID uh, vaccination. All right, Dr. Fiona Atuebwe, thank you so very much for giving us your time uh, here on SABC News. Much appreciated. My pleasure. All right, that is uh, Dr. Fiona Duhebu, who's the Regional New Vaccines Introduction Medical Officer at uh, WHO Regional uh, Officer for Africa.